Good morning. morning. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome you this morning to worship. We've been uh, in this theme of spiritual practices for a while, and so many of you will be thankful today that today's the last day of that. But but, we've been focusing on developing habits around forgiveness and praise and today gratefulness. Because the, part of the idea is that we don't just become thankful people overnight because we think we should be. We have to cultivate it, right? And then, and then anything that we think we know, we learn more by doing, right? Those of us who are hands-on know something about that. You learn more about it by actually practicing and doing it. So in our service today, we, we call our attention to what we would always say is a value, but we're going to focus on it and practice it today. Gratitude and thankfulness. Let's worship. Would you stand as you're able? And just a word of welcome to those who are on Zoom joining us today as well. responsibly in our call to worship. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. To declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. To the music of the lute and the harp and to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your work. At the works of your hands I sing
You may be seated. I invite you to join with me in our prayer of confession. How great are your works, O Lord. Forgive us when we fail to remember them, fail to see them. We are daunted by challenges, grieved by great injustices, worried by numerous unknowns. We are quick to complain, prone to jealousy, and coveting the good fortune of others. In these moments, draw our eyes back to you. Give us eyes to see your goodness, to be thankful for what you have done. Let us not be jealous and angry, but let our hearts overflow with joy and gratitude, giving you grace for all your and being content with what you have granted. Let it be so, dear Lord. And let us hear our reminder of forgiveness. Feel the powerful warmth of God's love for you. You are not forgotten nor forsaken. God is with you, healing, forgiving, and restoring your lives. Bring us peace, O Lord. We will rest in your love, your forgiveness, your goodness, and we will give thanks. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
So I get the joy of embarrassing people, I guess because I'm not afraid to stand up here and embarrass them. Sammy, today is your one-year anniversary of being here with us, and we have beautiful flowers from your parents, but we would like to recognize you formally, so you get to come up here and be embarrassed. I know, it's my, it's my duty, my goal and my job. <laughs> I know, I'm doing my very best. So Sammy, you have come on over here. You have to be in the camera so the people online can see you. Hi, people at home. <laughs> Sammy, you have been such a blessing to all of us. You bring us such beautiful music on Sundays. You help our choir be the best that they can be. You support Amy, and you bless us with concerts once a year, apparently. So we are so blessed and honored that you chose us to be your church home while you're here in Colorado. And we have a couple gifts of appreciation. We have some beautiful flowers in addition to your parents' flowers. And then we just have a little, ca a little card uh, for you. I won't choke. <laughs> but we are so blessed that you are here. Thank you. Can we get a round of applause? Hey kids, how many of you are going to go trick-or-treating on Halloween this year? I always loved trick-or-treating. We, we lived way out in the country, so we never stayed home for trick-or-treating. We drove all the way to Arvada on Halloween to our friend's house there. They lived in a big neighborhood with lots of other kids and miles of houses that you could wander through. Before we went trick-or-treating, we would all eat delicious chili and play games. Then, when it was just starting to get dark outside, all of us kids would change into our costumes and we'd go trick-or-treating. Before our group of kids and adults left, our parents always reminded us to say thank you after taking candy. We always rolled our eyes and started running down the block at top speed, ignoring them as best we could. It was so much fun to wear my costume and wander around with my friends and knock on people's doors and say trick or treat. Some of the houses we went to, you got huge handfuls of candy. Other houses, you would get king size candy bars. And there was even one place that if you got there at the right time, would give out cotton candy. It was the best. Now, this does tie with all of our Bible stories today, but I especially like the passage from 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians is what we call an epistle, which means it's a letter written to a group of people. Now, this particular group of people was the people at the church of Thessalonica, and the letter was written by Paul. Paul says many things in his letter to these people, but there is one section that I particularly like at the very end of the letter. Paul says, See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. That's a lot of instructions for the very end of a letter, but I always like these because they feel like words to live by, important things I can do to try and live a life that is more like the life Jesus lived. Now, back to my story about trick-or-treating. Sometimes when we went up to a house and knocked, the person handing out candy would politely tell us that we could each have one small piece of candy. Not the king-size ones, none of those. Sometimes it was a single Hershey's kiss. And even in moments like these, when we were a little disappointed, we always said thank you as we were leaving. This is one of the instructions that Paul gave the people at the church in Thessalonica, to give thanks in all circumstances. Now receiving only one piece of candy from a house when trick-or-treating, it's not that hard to say thank you. But sometimes we don't get, when we don't get something that was really important to us, or something really hard happens, something like not getting special time with a parent, not getting good grades on an exam, losing a family pet, or not getting to do something fun and special with friends. In those circumstances, it feels hard to give thanks, but I encourage you to pay attention when things like this are happening and see what else is happening in your life. I think you'll find that there is always something we can give thanks for, even in tough circumstances. Will you pray with me? Loving God, thank you. Thank you for being here with us in all circumstances, good and bad, joyful and sorrowful, happy and difficult. We ask that you would help us to give thanks, even during the difficult times in our lives, to help us see that you are blessing us each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. 
So Pastor Dave is going to do several announcements, but I have one that's near and dear to my heart, and it is in your bulletin. Um, Jesus Christ Superstar is at the is coming to the Denver Center for the Performing Arts at the end of January. I have um, about 20 tickets reserved. Um, I only have about 10 of those given out. So if you would like tickets, please let me know. I would love to get a larger group put together. It's going to be a great time. So that's my special thing. Pastor Dave, over to you. <laughs> And one more thing in connection to that, we talked about maybe doing a little kind of group discussion about the musical and tradition and things invoked in it after that weekend. So like this Sunday after the show, something of that nature. So that might be coming as well. Uh, there's a few announcements I just want to call your attention to. A number of ways to be connected and serve that are in the bulletin. So please read through them all. Uh, tomorrow is memorial service for ArtWise at Newcomer Funeral Home in Aurora. So if you're able to come and support Donnie and Amy and Art Jr., that is much appreciated. Tuesday morning, we have a small group that gathers, and we're, we'll, we'll be picking up some of our readings on Tuesday morning. So if you're free uh, and you have time, come join us, and you can read a little bit there what we'll be discussing uh, today is our Parker Task Force collection, and we are going to have uh, a new representative of Parker Task Force, Pat Greaser, come and join us in November, November 12th. He'll come and share a little bit more about what's going on there and how our monthly contributions are being used and utilized for needs in our community. Uh, and then the last thing I want to call attention to is uh, next Sunday, uh, brain freeze, Joseph Moore will be with us, uh, will be preaching from the Presbyterian Foundation, and he works with churches around thinking about stewardship and, and gratitude. And so he'll be preaching, and then we'll do a short uh, kind of workshop after the service. Uh, and one of the things that we've talked about with Joseph is that the ways churches make their budgets changes over time, and it's changing different than it used to be, and what are different ways we can give and steward resources to help uh, support the church than the traditional making our full budget through tithes mentality. So I uh, so invite you to stay and join us after next week uh, as Joseph is the expert, and we'll look forward to learning and hearing from him. Uh, and one other announcement I was going to make is men's breakfast is this Thursday at bread and butters. So if your cholesterol intake allows for an egg breakfast, you know, <laughs> come join us. All right, any other announcements that need attention? Steve? Yeah, just a segue on what Dave was just talking about. Um, as we all know, on occasion, there are a few empty seats here on the service morning. And so uh, Steve and I and Deacon have put together the idea that we will encourage all of you to bring anyone you want to the senior center for lunch and we as a deacon will pay for that person's lunch. So just an opportunity for you to schmooze with such anybody, somebody, and then um, enjoying them to come and join us. And also thanks for the year, a year of one, um, but a year of wonderful, wonderful, wonderful performance. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Steve. Oh, yeah, so just contact me or Steve okay. or D if you have somebody Okay. All right, any others? Elmira, did you have an announcement? I had seen Jesus Christ Superstar. I saw it with my son when he was about 11, I think. And I encourage you to go see it. It's an experience. Yeah. So we have a testimonial for Jesus Christ Superstar <laughs> inviting you to go. Well, we want to transition to our prayer time, and I know that Cassie's going to mention these things too, but I just want us to lift up a number of our folks in our congregation who are grieving losses. Uh, Wendy's brother just passed away suddenly. Uh, Art Wise passed away. Janice Charbonneau, uh, who's often with us with her grandson, Alec, uh, her husband died a couple weeks ago very suddenly, unexpectedly. So let's just lift up those in our congregation who are grieving. So. Please join me in prayer. God, we are so blessed that we have this place that we can come to and these people that we can turn to and you, O oh Lord, to hold us in the palm of your hand and remind us that you love us through everything, 
through the things that are difficult and the things that are easy, through the times when we are perfect Christians, God, and the times that we would like to forget because they were not in unison with what you want for us. And God, we pray that you would be with us through each of our days, that you would guide us and help us to know that you want the best for us and that you have a path laid for us. And God, we pray for the people of Israel and Palestine. We pray that you would hold your hands over them, that you would bring peace and that you would help them to know that you are with them, that you love them and that you care for them. And God, we pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good morning, everybody. The poem this morning is called Awe, and it's by James Cruz. It's a shiver that climbs the trellis of the spine, each tingle a bright white morning glory breaking into blossom beneath the skin. It can happen anywhere, anytime, even finding this sleeve of ice worn by a branch all morning, now fallen on a bed of snow. You can choose to pause, pick it up, hold the cold thing in your hand, or not. Few tell us that wonder and awe are decisions we make daily, hourly, minute by minute in the tiny offices of the heart. Tilting the head to look up at every tree turned into a chandelier by light striking ice in just the right way. Do you please join me in a prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this morning. Amen. And the Old Testament reading is Exodus 21 through 17. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who broke you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of... Excuse me, I'm starting over. <laughs> then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is on the earth or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And the New Testament reading from Luke 21 through 16. 
One day, as he was teaching the people of the temple and telling the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came with the elders and said to him, Tell us, by what authority are you doing these things? Who is it that gave you this authority? He answered them, I will also ask you a question, and you tell me. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? They discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, all the people will stone us, for they are convinced that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know where it came from. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. He began to tell this parable. A man planted a vineyard and leased it to tenants and went to another country for a long time. When the season came, he sent a slave to the tenants in order that they might give him his share of the produce of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him empty-handed. Next, he sent another slave. That one they also beat and insulted and sent away empty-handed. And he still sent a third. This one also they wounded and threw out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they discussed it among themselves and said, This is the heir. Let us kill him so that the inheritance may be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, Heaven forbid. John 5, 12 through 24. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the Lord, a God of peace himself, sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. As Amy was reading our gospel reading, I realized there's a typo in the bulletin. So the, the parable I'm going to mention in my sermon is actually from Matthew 20, not Luke 20. So that was my error. But it's always good to hear more parables, you know, it's not, it's more scripture. So I do want to read quickly just our, our, the parable from Matthew 20 that I'll refer to. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. And when he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you what is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those who were hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. 
saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I doing, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. Yeah. Well, this morning, I am grateful, too, that there are no rockets raining down around us, or that there are no militants parading our streets and abducting random people, that we are not being evacuated and our homes destroyed. I'm thankful for my kids' education, despite their challenges, thankful for the resources they've had. I'm thankful that we have a mortgage we can afford in an outrageous housing market. I'm grateful for food and that my wife is the one who cooks it rather than myself. <laughs> I'm grateful for clean water coming out of our faucets, for the blue sky where we can breathe freely. I'm thankful for the occasional elk sightings on my drive up Route 85, for my vacation time where I get to explore the natural places that feel to me like holy places. I'm thankful in a world of strangers, there are those that know me well. I could go on and should go on. And I wonder if you too would have your own log of thankfulness if you took the time to sit down and write it and what would be included on yours. Now I'm working at this, this gratitude stuff doesn't come naturally to me. This is more Tom Roth's territory, and I actually thought about just having him preach today, since this is kind of his mantra. In fact, how many times have we heard him say, it's hard to have a bad day if you have a grateful heart. That's Tom's. It'll be on his gravestone, I suspect. And this is, a, and when we talk about spiritual practices, this is a a practice for Tom. Every day he begins his day making a list of the things he is grateful for. And I have heard the call to thankfulness so many times used as a bludgeon towards others that perhaps that's what makes me a little bit sheepish about this emphasis on being grateful sometimes. Because how many times have you heard when someone complains or laments or calls out injustice, what is the reply? You ought to just be quiet and be grateful for what you have. But the reality is there's this balance, there's this tension. The reality is, is that the causes of righteousness and justice have always been advanced by a degree of discontent and unwillingness to accept the things as they are and to advocate for doing better. And the health of community comes from those who do not accept the status quo, but it advocate on behalf of the less fortunate. And the health of our hearts comes in part by being able to express all experiences and emotions, including lament and complaint and cries of injustice, rather than stuffing them down. And when I think of both our Exodus reading and our Thessalonians reading, that there is a central concern in both passages that has to do with the nurturing and the health of the faith community guiding the community in what it means to be faithful to the Lord and united as a community that reflects the Lord's purpose and care for them. And in Exodus, it is biblical Israel as they are leaving the heavy hand of enslavement as they journey through the wilderness and anticipate being a people in the land. And they're learning what it means to live outside of the heavy hand of oppression to let God govern them and to essentially govern themselves in some ways in the unknowns and stresses that freedom brings. And in the Thessalonians passage, it's the early church, as Paul is trying to guide them through this myriad of challenges and conflicts and ideologies and a thousand different things that could so easily divide them from one another and weaken the church. And so justice and advocating are important in both of those, to building such community. 
such a vision of, of faith and of God's kingdom. But I've been thinking this week also of the role of thankfulness and contentment, the role that plays also in the nurturing and the building of community. And so we might ask this morning, in what ways does our ability and our willingness to be thankful nurture and build up a sense of a healthy faith community? I think of those 10 words in Exodus. That's what they are translated literally in Hebrew, the devarim, the 10 words, the 10 things. Here's the 10 things you need to know, that you are different from other people. These are the ways that you are going to live that out. Ten things speaking to worshiping the Lord and no others. Not trying to leverage and bend God to your own wills, which is basically what is meant by using the Lord's name vainly. No turning to other gods for other things or keeping other images. Setting yourselves apart through Sabbath. And then we hear this little litany of things towards the end. Do not murder one another or lie to one another or take what each other has. And what would lead to murder and lying and stealing within the sense of a community other than things like selfishness and fear or unresolved anger or putting your needs higher than others or competing with each other, with each other for limited resources? And so it has struck me that in this list of commandments, this list of the ten things you need to be about, that right up with there, right up there with not murdering one another and not lying or taking each other things, is this command to not covet or to want what other people have. To be content with what we have. To not be jealous or envy of the fortune or the belongings of somebody else. And I've been thinking about how ingrained in our society and in our su success of marketing that, that that's exactly what they're trying to get us to do, is believe we need something that somebody else has to make us feel that we're missing out on something if we don't have that car or that, that property. We're supposed to want what other people have. In fact, it's the American ideal that if I work hard enough, I can have what you have. And it draws attention to our different fortunes. It makes me compare my life to yours. It makes me compare the challenges I feel to the good fortunes that you post on Facebook, as if that's an appropriate comparison. Comparison, as I've heard it said many times, I don't remember who coined this phrase, but comparison is the thief of joy. It is the seed of discord. You shall not covet what your neighbor has, not his house or his wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. And perhaps I cannot truly give my heart and energy and worship to the Lord if I am not willing to see God's blessings in my own life, if I'm not willing to be thankful, if I am not able to discern how God has been at work in my circumstances, and perhaps I cannot truly love my neighbor and be in community with one another unless I'm willing to accept you in your life just as it is in the same way I need to accept my own. Our poet this morning reminds us, few tell us that wonder and awe are decisions we make daily, hourly, minute by minute in the tiny offices of the heart. Thankfulness, community, kindness, wonder, awe, mutual support, the kind of decisions we make hourly, daily, minute by minute in the offices of the heart. And in our gospel reading from Matthew 20, Bill Sanders actually preached on this a few weeks ago with the theme of justice, focusing on how you know, the limitations of fairness and the standard of caring for one another, of each receiving what they need. But reading it today, I wonder what would we, what stands out to us differently through the theme or the lens of gratitude and thankfulness 
And I know for me what stands out is that the grumbling comes from a few and overshadows it all. And furthermore, the grumbling comes from those who had what they needed, who were dealt fairly with, really. They had work and they had payment. They had what they needed for their families that day, but they compared themselves to the others, which led to charges of unfairness and injustice and overshadowed the whole thing with complaint and ungratefulness. And I think of Paul admonishing the Thessalonians in a number of ways in our epistle reading, all aiming at keeping the early church focused on Christ and their calling and on the unity of their fellowship, lest they slowly fall apart through one small thing or another. He appeals to them to respect their leaders and those that admonish them. And then he says, be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to, to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And do not quench the spirit. Give thanks in all circumstances, suggesting that even in the midst of challenges, there are evidence of God's presence. There are blessings that we can see. And can we cultivate soft and open hearts even in those times, rather than anger and complaint and frustration? And finally, I wonder if gratefulness and thankfulness and contentment when cultivated might actually help us pursue justice and each other's needs also. Because I can now, if I can achieve this, I can now be present to you without needing to compare your life to mine. I don't need to compare it to whether you've worked as hard as I've worked. And perhaps the willingness to be thankful in all circumstances, to choose to be content and not to covet or envy what others have, whether possessions or circumstances or events, then we might be able to care for one another, to let go of our bitterness and our attitudes and our jealousy. For as Paul writes, see that none of you repays evil for evil, but always do good to one another, rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. And do not quench the spirit. Thankfulness, like a shiver that climbs the trellis of the spine, each tingle a bright white morning glory breaking into blossom beneath the skin. It can happen anywhere, anytime, even finding this sleeve of ice worn by a branch all morning now fallen on a bed of snow. You can choose to pause, pick it up, hold the cold thing in your hand or not. Few tell us that wonder and awe are decisions we make daily, hourly, minute by minute in the tiny offices of the heart. And we, we who know of God's redemptive hope and purposes, how much more do we have reason to be thankful how much more do we have reason to wonder and awe and to be grateful? How much more should we have the ability to be present to one another without comparison or envy, to be more able to love our neighbors and to follow the example of Christ? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. And do not quench the Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's sing our hymn.
out this morning, we invite you to place your tithes and offerings in the offering back box on the back table. Let us pray. Lord, give us grateful and thankful hearts that do not compare ourselves to others, but ask ourselves, what is it that you would have us give? How would you have us serve? Lead us in the giving of our gifts and take and use them, we pray, that you may use it for your work here among us and around the world. Amen. We go this morning always in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Creator, and the fellowship of the Spirit with us now and forevermore. Amen.